So uh, my name is Emmanuel Per from uh, Fourier Institute, and I'm going to chair this morning session. So our first speaker is Vincent Lafogue from uh, Institut Mathematique de Jussieu and CNRS, and he will speak about stocks of sukas on spectral decomposition. Thank you. Uh, so uh, um, the works I will explain uh, owe a lot to uh, Jean-Benoît Bosse, Denis Guesgoury, and uh, Alain Genestier. I thank them. So in this talk, I will try to define all the notions I use as much as I can. So the, uh, because my English accent is not perfect, I prefer to read the, the slides a bit. <laughs> It will be easier to follow. So the long lens program involves uh, reductive groups over global fields. So the global fields are number fields and function fields. There are two types of global fields. Uh, I will explain later. So in this talk, a ring means, always means a commutative unital ring. Uh, so a number field is a finite extension of the field of rational numbers, which means that you add some roots of a polynomial with coefficient in Q. In the next slides, I will give a short introduction, the more familiar case of GLN over Q to introduce the automorphic forms. And then the rest of the talk will be about uh, reductive groups over function fields. So, case of GLN over Q, first uh, without level. So the vector space of automorphic forms without level for GLN over Q with complex coefficients is a space of L2 functions on the quotient of GLNR by GLNZ. This quotient, L, classifies the lattices in Rn, uh, which means a couple m yota, where m is a free z module of rank n, uh, zn, and yota is a discrete embedding of m in Rn. So if we fix a basis of m, and, uh, which means an isomorphism with zn, Then yota is given by a matrix in uh, GLN of R. And to forget the choice of the basis of M, we, we have to take the quotient by GLN Z. That's why the, this quotient classifies the lattices in Rn. And the Hilbert space uh, of L2 functions on L is equipped with a unitary representation of GLN R by right translation. So now I explain the unramified decay operators. So for any prime number p and any enupole lambda of uh, integers, positive and decreasing, we have the unramified decay operator, which is given by this formula, where the sum is finite and is taken over all sub z modules m prime in m, uh, such that uh, the inclusion of m prime in n in m as uh, elementary divisors lambda lambda n and then uh, we restrict iota uh, to m prime so we say that the an inclusion m prime into m uh, as elementary divisors lambda lambda n and is a modification at p not at other prime numbers Uh, if there is a basis uh, E1, EN of M over Z, such that M prime is given in this basis uh, by uh, uh, formula here, uh, inside M uh, with this basis vector. So, for example, when lambda is 1, 0, 0, 0, then this is equivalent to say that M over M prime is Z over PZ.
So now I consider automorphic forms with level. So the level is a positive integer n. The vector space of automorphic forms with level is a space of L2 functions on Ln. Uh, Ln classifies uh, lattices in Rn with a level structure, which means an isomorphism modulo n, an isomorphism of m divided by nm with z over nz to the, to the n. And the, this vector space, automorphic forms, is equipped with actions of uh, ramified decay operators as before, uh, but only for p prime to n. Then the, there is a non-commutative algebra of ramified decay operators uh, for each prime p dividing n. And then there is the action of GLNR by right translation. And these actions commute with each other. So the well-known holomorphic modular forms are obtained as a isotypical part uh, corresponding to the discrete series representation of GL2R in the case where n equal to. And for n equal 1, it's, it's the automorphic forms with level are the Dirichlet characters. So the goal of the long lens program is the following. Uh, so the unramified echo operators uh, for all p and all prime to n and all lambda commute with each other. And so we can uh, simultaneously diagonalize them. In the setting of the previous slide, uh, the goal of the long lens program is to decompose the vector space of automorphic forms as a direct sum of eigenspaces for these uh, operators indexed by global long lens parameters and to have a multiplicity formula for these eigenspaces as representation of the ramified equal algebras at prime speed divided n and of GLNR. So there are conjectures of Arthur in general. The global long lens parameters are morphism from the Galois group of Q to uh, GLN of uh, QL bar for some L, I will explain later, uh, provided some algebraicity condition and the representation of GLNR are imposed. Uh, uh, These this conditions, for example, are not uh, satisfied by the mass form. Uh, these conditions have no analog over function field mm -hmm. because they involve only the Archimedean place, place R. So uh, now I come to places. So in general, a uh, place of a global field is a, a norm up to equivalence. And the completion uh, for this norm is called a local field. So in the places of Q are the Archimedean place where the, the norm is a usual absolute value and the, the completion is R. And for every prime number P, the place P, where the completion is QP and the periodic norm uh, given by this formula. And, uh, so the point is that the, the bigger the power of P, uh, the smaller the periodic norm. And uh, ZP is a ring of integers of QP. It's also the projective limit of uh, Z mod P and Z. Now I, I introduce Adels. So the restricted product of all QP is a subring of elements of the product which belong to ZP for uh, all P ex uh, except finitely many. And uh, the ring of Adels, to, take, to obtain the ring of Adels, you take the product of this with R. And uh, it's a locally compact rim, and Q embeds discreetly and co compactly in, in the ring of Adels. And an, an element of Q is in Z if, if and only if uh, it has no, if and only if its image in the restrictive product of QP is in the product of the ZP. And therefore, GLNZ inside GLN of QP is the inverse image of 
GLN of the product of the GP inside the GLN of the restricted product of the QP. And from this, we can deduce that the space L of the previous slide uh, is equal to the double quotient of uh, GLN of Adels by GLN Q and by GLN of the product of the ZP. And more generally, for any level N, you, uh, the space of lattices with level N, LN, introduced in a previous slide, is equal to the double quotient, but on the right, you put Kn, and Kn is a subgroup of a finite index in a GLN of product of ZP, the kernel of the morphism to GLN of Z over NZ. And Kn is an open uh, subgroup in a GLN of A. For the general setting of the Langlands program uh, is the following. So G is a reductive group over a global field. In this talk, I assume G is split. And uh, G hat is a long lens dual group of G. Uh, so you switch, uh, to obtain G hat, you switch root and co-roots, weight and co-weight. And uh, there are examples here of the correspondence between uh, G and, uh, and G hat. And the locally compact ring of uh, Adels, uh, A of F, uh, which can be defined as we did for Q, uh, contains F discreetly. And the goal of the Langlands program is to decompose the quotient of L2, the, or to decompose the vector space of L2 functions on the quotient G of A by G of F as a representation of G of A in terms of uh, long lens parameter, which are under some algebraicity condition in the case of number field, uh, continuous morphisms uh, from the Galois group of F to uh, G hat of QL bar for some L. And uh, so now I will uh, consider only function fields First, I will define them. And uh, to, I have to begin with some uh, basic notions of algebraic geometry. So the, for any ring A, Grothendieck defines a fine scheme spec A, such that the ring of function on spec A is A. General schemes are obtained by gluing procedure from a fine scheme, and the schemes generalize uh, algebraic varieties over a field. For example, if n is a positive integer, spec of z over nz is a closed subscheme of spec z. So it, it will be useful to define the level in the case of function field. Uh, when a field is finite, I have to recall finite field, I apologize. So uh, when, uh, finite fields have cardinals, which are uh, power of a prime number p, and they are uh, finite extensions of uh, fp called z over pz. And for any Q, the cardinal Q, it's unique up to automorphism and denoted by FQ. And then for any FQ algebra A, we have the Frobenius morphism from A to A, which is an endomorphism of FQ algebra, X down XQ. And uh, for any scheme S over FQ, we denote by Frobenius S the morphism which acts on function by from star of f. So from star of f is just a composition of f and from, and from, okay. And this is fq. So the definition of a function field, function field is a field of rational functions on a smooth projective curve x over a finite field fq. And uh, we assume that uh, fq is really the constant field of the curve. It's geometrically connected. Uh, a curve means an algebraic variety of dimension 1. Uh, smooth means uh, non-singular. And projective means that we had the points at infinity of the curve. And the rational function is uh, an algebraic function with arbitrary so the simplest example is a 
P1, so F is a FQ uh, of T, the fields of all quotients of polynomials uh, P over Q with coefficient in FQ in the one variable T. And if we consider T as a coordinate on the fine line, uh, so the A1 is a spec of uh, FQ bracket T, if you want, and uh, F is a field of rational functions on the projective line X, which is P1 and uh, A1 plus the point at infinity. And uh, so for the analogy, if you are not familiar with this, uh, we can consider FQ of T as an analog of Q and FQ bracket T as an analog of Z. So it's a unique factorization ring like Z and uh, unitary reducible polynomials in FQ bracket T play the same role as prime numbers in Z. Uh, so I, I uh, so X is a smooth projective curve and F is a field of rational function for the rest of the talk. Uh, and we define the close points of the curve as uh, irreducible uh, subschemes of dimension zero. And uh, for each uh, close point, the ring of function is a finite at uh, V, is a finite extension of FQ defined, denoted by K of V and called the residue field at V. And so I give the example of, of P1 again. So the close point are the point at infinity where the residue field is FQ. And for any irreducible unitary polynomial P in uh, FQ bracket T, we have a corresponding close point whose residue field is a quotient. And it, which is a finite extension of FQ of the degree, uh, degree of P. So the close point are exactly the places of V for each close point V. We denote FV the completion at, of F at V. So uh, this ring of integers is a ring of function on the formal neighborhood of V, and uh, FV is a ring of function on the punctured, uh, is a field of function on the punctured formal neighborhood of V. So we recall that the ring of Adels is a restricted product of all uh, FV. Uh, uh, consisting of elements which belong to the ring of integers, but all V except finitely many. And O is a ring of ad integral adults, product of the ring of integer of all FV. And uh, we recall that G is a split reductive group over F. And then we consider the, the quotient as before in the case of GLN over Q. So G of A divided by G of F divided by G of O. And in fact, it, it has a geometric interpretation. It's a, in fact, uh, the FQ points of a stack bungee, we'll ex I will explain. And uh, for the moment, I just say that bungee of FQ is a set of isomorphism classes of G principal bundles over X. So a uh, G principal bundle over X is defined as a morphism uh, y to x with a simply transitive action of uh, g on the fibers. So it's called also a g torsor. And the GLR principal bundle corresponds exactly to the vector bundles. There are the frame bundles associated to the vector bundle of rank R. And uh, we have the equality uh, in 0 0.1 uh, because uh, Every G principal bundle can be trivialized uh, on the curve minus a finite set of points. And at then at the finite set of points, it's given by this uh, product. And, uh, and then if you change the trivialization, you, know, the, you act by an element of G of F. So the quotient by G of F corresponds to the changing the trivialization.
So now I, I define uh, automorphic forms over function fields. So with a level n. So n now is a finite subscheme of uh, x, uh, which is the same as a finite subset of uh, places of x with multiplicities. O n is a ring of function on n. G of O n is a it is a finite ring, and G of O n is a finite group. And K n is a kernel of G of integral adults to G of O n. It is an open compact subgroup of G of A. And we consider the double quotient by Kn. And then it is bungi n of Fq, which is a set of uh, isomorphism classes of G principal bundles over X with a trivialization of their restriction to N. And an automorphic form with level N is a function on bungi n of Fq. In particular, an automorphic form with a trivial level is a function on bungi of Fq. And, uh, in fact, later we will consider function with finite support or compact support. Uh, but in this definition, I prefer no, no low any support. So, uh, in fact, uh, G principal bundles over X may have automorphisms. And uh, Bungie N of FQ is a groupoid. Uh, whose elements have uh, finite automorphism groups. And uh, it is a groupoid of points over FQ of uh, what is called a stack, uh, bungie n over FQ. So I, I switch to the end of the slide. So a, sli a stack is like a scheme, uh, like an algebraic variety, if you want, whose points may have algebraic automorphism groups. For example, the, the quotient of an algebraic variety by the, the fine, uh, smooth affine algebraic group is a stack. The quotient of a, to simplify, the quotient of an uh, uh, algebraic variety by GLN acting on the variety is a stack. Okay. And so the Bungie N is a stack over FQ uh, such that its groupoid of points over a scheme S over FQ classify the G principal bundles over uh, X times S together with the trivialization of the restriction to N times S. Uh, so the products are products of schemes over spec FQ. So I, uh, it's easy enough to explain the, this notion for a fine scheme. And if A and B are FQ algebras, uh, product of spec n, spec b, the spec of the tensor product. So now I can explain cuspidal automorphic forms over function fields. So I will consider them with quotient in QL instead of Q. I uh, will say uh, why. So I have to choose L, a prime number not dividing Q. I will recall that the definition of the L and QL and the QL bar and algebraic closure. And then I consider function with a compact support. In fact, here we should say finite support, but because uh, the GN of FQ is discrete, but I use a little index C to, to say compact support. And inside we have the function, cuspidal function with compact support. There is notion of cuspidality, uh, it is, uh, which I cannot explain here. It, uh, involve the parabolic subgroups of G. It means that it does not come by induction from a Levy subgroup. And uh, so we have these two uh, vector spaces. And uh, the uh, cuspidal automorphic forms are the elementary bricks to build, uh, to build all automorphic forms. And uh, so we could have defined these uh, vector spaces over Q, but we take them with coefficient in QL because uh, we have to use a homology and a long lens parameter with coefficient in QL. And so everything uh, has to be with coefficient, with coefficient in QL for the long lens correspondence. So now I define the unramified echo operators. Uh, I assume that uh, first that N is empty. 
and uh, I will consider the echo operator at v, cos point of x. And if g and g prime are two g principal bundles over x, we say that g prime is a modification of g at v if we are given two isomorphism, an isomorphism between the restriction to x minus v. And then the relative position at v, the dominant coweight lambda of g. Uh, and we introduce an ramified echo operator, t lambda v, given by this formula, where the sum is finite and is taken over the modifications uh, g prime of g at v with relative position lambda. Uh, more generally, with a level n for any closed point and uh, in x minus n and any coate lambda, we have an operator t lambda v acting on a Automorphic forms with level n. And uh, when lambda varies, this operator spans an unramified echo algebra, HV, which is commutative and uh, acts on uh, this uh, automorphic forms and cuspidal automorphic forms. So the, now I, I define the other side of the Langlands correspondence, the, the Galois side. So let f bar be an algebraic closure of f. The Galois group is a group of automorphism which are identity on f. And uh, I will consider a quotient denoted by P1 of u when u is an open subscheme of x, the complement of a finite number of closed points. So we consider the subfield of f bar generated by all finite extensions which correspond to unramified coverings of u. And then the Pi 1 of u is a quotient through which the Galois group acts on, uh, on this uh, subfield of f bar. And uh, all f bar and f bar u contain fq bar. And this gives a morphism of pi 1 of u to Galois, fq bar over fq. And the pi 1 geometric is a kernel by definition. It's a pi 1 of the curve over fq bar. That's why it's called geometric. And the Galois group of f q bar over f u is the hat with generator x dot x q, and we define the veil group of u by the short exact sequence uh, with z instead of the hat. Uh, so a global long lens parameter is a g hat of QL bar conjugacy classes of continuous and semi-simple morphisms uh, sigma of the veil group to g hat. You can take the Galois group if you prefer, or the, the pi one if you prefer. So to simplify, we assume from now on that G is semi-simple. It means that its center is finite. Uh, then the cuspidal automorphic forms is of finite dimension. The theorem is that we have a canonical decomposition of cuspidal automorphic form uh, indexed by global long lens parameters. Uh, which are morphism from the veil group of x minus n to g hat of QL bar up to conjugation. It's respected by all echo operators. And we have a compatibility with the Zatek isomorphism at all close points. We'll explain the meaning. So it was already known by my and my brother for GLN. So I will uh, introduce the st Stukas and the geometric Zatek equivalence are used in the proof. So the meaning of the compatibility with the uh, Satake isomorphism is the following. We have the Satake isomorphism. So morphism from the representation uh, ring of uh, g hat uh, to the unramified echo algebra. And uh, so we have uh, a new way to index uh, echo operators, TVV instead of T lambda V. They are different bases of the same uh, space, of the same echo algebra. And um, uh, pi 1 of v is, uh, is the hat with the generators of Frobenius at v. And we denote by Frob v, the pi 1 of x minus n, the, the image of Frobenius v by the morphism of associated to the inclusion of v in uh, x minus n. And then we get a Frobenius element in a veil group of x minus n, which is well defined up to conjugation. And the, the compatibility of the decomposition with satake isomorphism means that 
uh, we know uh, how the k operators act. So the, the k operators preserve this decomposition and they act on uh, H sigma by multiplication by something which depends only on sigma. So we know exactly how they act on the right hand side. And this decomposition refines, in fact, the decomposition by diagonalization of the echo operators, of the unramified echo operators. So now I will explain the ideas of the proof. So we construct a commutative algebra B of uh, excursion operators, which contain all the unramified uh, echo operators. And such that it uh, acts on automorphic forms with compact support and cuspidal automorphic forms. And each character of this algebra uh, corresponds to the unique way to a long loss parameter. So after that, it's only a spectral decomposition. So, uh, okay. It's after the theorem is just a spectral decomposition for the action of this algebra. And uh, now I have to introduce, uh, uh, to construct this excursion algebra, I have introduced the Eladic cohomology of Stukas. And first, I have say a few words about Eladic cohomology and first about sites and topos. So, uh, the Eladic cohomology of, of stacks uh, is very similar to the Betty cohomology of complex varieties, but it has coefficient in QL. And then it is defined using the notion of site of topos. So uh, first I begin to, see, to consider the site associated to a topological space to give an example. So to a topological space, we can associate the category with objects as the open subset U in Y, and the rows are the inclusion of open subset of Y. So it's a category, and we have a notion of a covering of an open subset by a family of open subsets. And we have a notion of shift on, on this. And uh, site is an abstract category uh, with the same uh, notion of covering of objects by families of objects. So it's a data of a site. And uh, uh, shift of sets on the site is a contravariant functor. U uh, gives f of u set sections of f over u such that for any covering of u by a family of ue in this abstract category the section of f over u is the same as the family of section of f over ue satisfying the gluing condition and we can associate to any sheaf of abelian group on the side its cohomology group exactly and on a, as on a topological space and so topos in the category of sheaf of sets on the side in fact is the most fundamental notion and the uh, Uh, the etal site of uh, algebraic variety Y, say smooth to simplify, uh, is a category whose objects are the etal morphism from U to Y. So a morphism is etal if its uh, differential is everywhere in invertible. And uh, the rows are given by the commutative triangles of etal morphisms and with the uh, obvious uh, notion of covering. So the etal cohomology of an algebraic variety Y over an algebraic closed field uh, of characteristic different from L is defined as a cohomology of the etal site with cohesion in uh, Z over L and Z, then ZL, then uh, QL. And uh, if uh, Y is defined over K, characteristic different from L, then the, we consider the cohomology of the variety over K bar, but then it's equipped with a continuous action of Galois of K bar over K. And so this is very analogous to the situation where you have an algebraic variety over R and the Betty cohomology of the variety over C is equipped with an action of Galois of C over R, the complex conjugation. Uh, so more generally, we can define the retail cohomology of any stack over an algebraic closed field with cohesion in any QL shift F. And now I can define the stack of Stukas. Uh, uh, I will uh, assume an empty to simplify. So what is a Stuka? It was introduced by Drinfeld. So uh, in the 70s, 
uh, recall that from S is a Frobenius morphism for any scheme S. And so we have to take a finite set and uh, Stuka is a stack over X to the I whose points over a scheme S over FQ classify Stuka as namely points uh, uh, family of uh, morphism from S to X uh, called the legs of the Stuka. So there is one leg for any ele element of I. The leg is a homomorphism from S to X. And a G principle bundle G over M X times S. And an isomorphism uh, between the, this G principle bundle and it's pulled back by identity on X and from the news of S. And this isomorphism is an, on X x times s minus the union of the graph of the xi. So it's a modification of the x and the graph of the xi. So this stack of Stuka is a Delin Mumford stack. Uh, the dimorphism groups are finite, finite groups. And the stack of Stuka without legs is exactly equal to the bungee of FQ. And uh, there are no analog of Stuka over number fields because nobody knows uh, how to replace x to the i. And the work of Fagan Scholze uses an analog of local Stukas over QP. So now I recall the geometric static equivalence uh, briefly. So in the definition of stack of Stukas, there are two things. There's this modification uh, on the graph of the XI, and then the isomorphism between the, with a pullback by uh, Frobenius S. And here, in the, the I consider the stack M of modification uh, without the pullback by Frobenius. So M is classified two principal bundles, G and G prime. G prime is no more the, the pullback of G by Frobenius. Uh, so the, no, the, they are on the, only on the formal completion of uh, X times S along the union of the, the graphs. And then there is a, an isomorphism uh, with poles on the on the union of the graphs. Okay, so this stack depends only on the set theoretic union of the graphs in some sense. And the fusion of legs is what happens when some xi become equal. Uh, the geometric set equivalence associates to any finite set i and any algebraic finite dimensional representation of uh, gi to the i, a pervers shift on mi. Uh, which is functorial in W and compatible with the fusion of legs. And there is a forgetful morphism from Stuka to MI. We keep the modification, we forget the relation with the uh, Frobenius. Okay? And uh, we define a shift on a Stuka by the, as, a, as a pullback of this Satake shift on MI. And then we take the relative homology of Stuka's with a uh, compact support with coefficients in FIW. In fact, we take the uh, decomology of uh, the fiber, the, the inverse image of a point on uh, X to the I. Uh, the point is uh, either the generic, po gen generic point or the geometric generic point of the diagonal. A posterior is, is the same, uh, obtain the same result. And uh, uh, when n is non-empty, uh, we, we have the, can define a stack of Stuka's with a level n and uh, construct HLW in the same way. So the, we have this uh, morphism uh, from Stuka i to x minus n to the i, which gives the legs. And uh, the, in fact, the QL vector space HIW is equipped with a continuous action of V to the I, thanks to partial Frobenius morphism introduced by Rinfeld, my work, and the work of Song Xu. Here, continuous means that the union of the subspaces of finite dimension with continuous action is, uh, of uh, pi 1 geometric to the I. So, because uh, the topology of V is, is only in pi 1 geometric, and continuity means that it's a uh, union of subspaces of finite dimension with continuous action of pi 1 geometric. 
So now I explain the strategy to construct the algebra B of excursion operators. So when uh, there is no leg, we have the uh, automorphic forms. And uh, we will use the HAW to, to make uh, um, to make the, to construct the, uh, the excursion operator acting on uh, H uh, empty set one. So the property of the HIW that we use is first the functoriality. Okay, it's functorial in W. And then the fusion. So fusion can be associated to any map uh, I to G, but I restrict to the case where G is a singleton, zero. And uh, so the fusion isomorphism is a uh, Isomorphism between HIW and H0 W diag. W diag is a diagonal representation of G hat and W. And uh, there are two examples fusion. First, when you have two representations of G hat, then H12 W external product W1 external product W2 with H0 W1 tensor W2. And then uh, uh, the second example, <laughs> which we will use also, is a case where the, you have the obvious map from the empty set to zero. And then you get that the H empty set one is, one is a one dimensional trivial representation. You get that H empty set one is H zero one. So now I recall the construction of the Excursion, uh, the ex I explain the construction of the excursion operators. So they are associated to uh, an algebraic function of G hat to the high mod G hat on both sides. Uh, that we, we write this function as a matrix coefficient of vector and a linear form, uh, which are invariant by the diagonal action of G hat inside the representation of G hat to the high. And then we take gamma i in the vial group to the i, and then the excursion operator is defined as the composition, the composition here. So if we create legs, uh, and then you, you use the, the gamma i, the excursion by the gamma i, and then you will delete the legs. Um, And thanks of the, to the properties of the HIW, we show that this algebra of excursion operators is commutative. And uh, for any character new of this algebra, there is a unique Langlands parameter such that uh, this formula is very important. So the, the image of the excursion operator by mu, by this character mu, is equal to f of the sigma of the gamma i. Because the, the gamma i are in G hat, uh, the gamma i are in the vague group, so the sigma of gamma i are in G hat, so the family is in, in G hat of the i, and you can apply the function f. Uh, in fact, the, the, the sigma of gamma i are in G hat of QL bar. Okay, and then you apply f, and you get something in QL bar. So since V is commutative, uh, we have the spectral decomposition by its action. And then uh, you have the, the in a generalized uh, echo eigenspaces, in generalized eigenspaces. And uh, then, so this spectral decomposition is indexed by characters, but then to each character by the point two, you associate a Langlands parameter. And uh, it's compatible with the uh, Satake isomorphism. Uh, in fact, the ex because uh, the excursion operator generalizes the unramified echo operator by the formula which is given here. But in, in general, they are more. They can be more, they can be excursion operators which do not come from uh, unramified echo operator. So there are some open questions uh, that the, all the sigma which appear in this decomposition of the 
cuspidal. Oh yes, I forgot to say that this, we did the spectral decomposition only for cuspidal automorphic form because it's finite dimensional. Okay. But later in the talk, I will explain uh, uh, what happened for non-cuspidal. So for, uh, we, are, we are, uh, expect that all the sigma uh, which appear in the decomposition of the cuspidal automorphic form come from elliptic Arthur parameters. Uh, we expect that the, this decomposition is defined over Q bar instead of QL bar, but this is a very hard problem because it's related to motives. And uh, in a joint work with Genestier, uh, we construct, uh, we, we see what happens at the ramified places. So at the ramified places, we have an action of the ramified equal algebra. And uh, what we can say is that the, the character by which the center of the algebra of ramified echo operator acts on uh, H sigma uh, depends only on the restriction of, sig of the restriction of sigma to the local veil group, even the semi-simplification of this restriction. So this is related to Fark Schulzer who do it on a number of and, and more. So there is an Arthur Kotwit heuristics uh, for the multiplicities. Uh, it says very rossly that so if th there should be some discrete part in the HIW. Um, as they are the discrete part in a discrete subspace in automorphic forms, and it should be equal to this formula, uh, sum over sigma of uh, A sigma times W sigma A invariant by A sigma. Uh, a sigma is a centralizer of sigma in uh, GIAT, QL bar, and uh, the W sigma A is a composition, is a, is a representation of a uh, veil to the eye, obtained by composition of W and the morphism sigma to the eye. And now I will explain the construction proposed by Drinfeld. And uh, to do this decomposition, uh, to, to do this heuristics, to obtain something close to this heuristic. So we define a scheme S, locally of finite type, over QL of morphism sigma of the veil group to GIAT, such that, uh, so the definition is a bit technical. Uh, so it's a scheme over QL, uh, which classifies in some sense the Langlands parameters. So the QL bar points of this uh, scheme are the long glance parameter, except that we, for the moment, we do not conjugate by, by GIAT. So the scheme S really classifies the morphism of the veil group to GIAT. So the definition is that uh, for any QL algebra R, the R points are the morphism of the veil group to GIAT of R, uh, such that. So there is something co complicated because uh, of the topology of pi-1 geometric. So we, we have to uh, impose that the, so assume that GI is a GLN, then we have an action of Rn, and then Rn seen as a QL vector space is an elective limit, a union of continuous representations of pi-1 geometry on finite dimensional QL vector spaces. And then if I denote by reg the left regular representation of GI uh, with a left translation, action by left translation, then uh, can undo uh, H singleton regular with a structure of O module on S and an action of GIAT compatible with conjugation. And this gives rise to a O module on the algebraic stack of uh, long lens parameters, uh, the algebraic stack S mod GIAT. And uh, a sigma should be the fiber of this O module at sigma and equipped with an action of the centralizer S sigma, which is automorphism group of S. 
And so she, she went through and I have proved this for elliptic sigma, which means that sigma is finite. So uh, a reformulation of the following uh, of the O module is the following structure that for any finite dimensional curlinear representation V of G hat with underlying vector space V bar, the H0 rec tensor V bar is equipped with an action of a veil the inductive limit of finite dimensional continuous representation of pi 1. And this structure is functorial in V and compatible with tensor products. And so uh, uh, here is a definition. In fact, we use the fact that the regular, the tensor product with the regular eats any representation. Uh, so regular tensor something is isomorphic to regular tensor trivial by, by this formula. And so regular tensor V bar is isomorphic to regular tensor V. And then from this, we, using this, uh, we can uh, define an isomorphism between uh, H0 rec tensor V bar and H0 uh, rec tensor V, and then by fusion, H0 1 reg external product with V. And then we have an action of the veil group on the right hand side corresponding to the leg one. And uh, if, uh, uh, in fact, uh, another way to see this O module structure is that if uh, F is a function on G hat defined by a matrix coefficient and gamma is an element of the veil group, then uh, FF gamma uh, is uh, uh, function on S by which uh, sigma associate F of sigma of gamma and uh, its action of uh, H0 reg by this st structure of O module on S is equal to this composition. So you send H0 reg to H0 reg tensor v, v bar by using X and then you make gamma act and then you, you, you apply Xi. And uh, this, uh, the F, F gamma are function on S. And the relation with the excursion operator is the following. The excursion operator, they are function on S mod G hat. They are the, the, the coarse quotient, if you want. There's a difference between the stack and the coarse quotient. And uh, so the excursion operator are a particular case of a combination of products of the F, F gamma, uh, which are invariant uh, under G hat. And uh, then uh, for any morphism sigma, we can define A sigma, the, the, the fiber of this O module at sigma. Technically, it's uh, this uh, biggest quotient and so on. And uh, when sigma is elliptic, uh, which means that S sigma is finite, uh, uh, we proved with, uh, I proved with uh, Shi Wenzhou that uh, denoting by HW sigma the, oh yes, in fact, the, the excursion operator act not only on autonomorphic forms, but also on the H, uh, HIW, which is uh, clear from the previous slide, in fact, and easy to see anyway. And so the general eigenspace for the excursion operators acting on HW, which is also the true eigenspace for elliptic sigma, and uh, we have this uh, multiplicity formula in terms of A sigma, she was uh, exactly as in the after Kotwitz uh, heuristics. And in fact, everything is of finite dimension uh, thanks to the work of Tsong Xu, even without the cuspidal uh, uh, assumption, the cuspidality condition, which is not present here. And then uh, I want to say just one thing about the geometric dealing with the geometric long lens program. So they are fantastic. Say, very recent works by uh, six people, Arinkin, Gesguri, Kajdan, Raskin, Rosenblum, and Warshawski, which are, uh, made huge uh, progress in the Eladic, uh, in the geometric Langlands program, in particular Eladic. So they introduced a stack of uh, restricted uh, local systems, uh, local system with restricted variation. So uh, uh, it's a uh, complicated stack is derived and is formal in some directions. And they, they have a category, a DG category of sheaves on bungee. 
uh, Elladic shifts on Bungie with singular support in uh, some uh, nilpotent cone in the cotangent of Bungie. Uh, and they prove that it admits, this category admits a spectral decomposition over this uh, stack. Uh, so everything here is, a, for a, in fact, a curve over FQ bar. Okay. It's geometric. And, the category, and then there is a link with arithmetic when the curve is over FQ that the categorical trace of Frobenius on this category recovers the automorphic form and the categorical trace of Frobenius composed with equal functors uh, recovers the HIW. And, uh, and then they define the stack of uh, arithmetic local system as a Frobenius invariant. So it's a quasi algebraic derived stack. And the classical stack associated to it by forgetting the derived structure is exactly the S I introduced before. So it's a refinement of the S in the sense of derived geometry. And they construct an object DRINF uh, in the DG category of uh, quasi coherent sheaves. And this, uh, so it's a uh, O modules, if you want, on uh, uh, this arithmetic, uh, this stack of arithmetic local system, which allows to recover all the HIW not only as cohomology group, but in a DG category of least sheaves on uh, X to the I. So unfortunately, this is uh, limited to the uh, situation without level yeah. for the moment. And for uh, elliptic sigma as above, uh, there is an embedding of a point divided by S sigma as a connected component of this stack of arithmetic local system and the restriction of DRINF of the dream for the, these six people is exactly the A sigma for my, for my work with uh, Shi Wenzu. And so uh, at the end, I wanted to say something that now I am studying math for quantum chemistry. I've begun to do this. And uh, I'm not yet at a level uh, to give a talk about, about it, but I am uh, working and uh, uh, it's related to operator algebra. So I, I want to say, uh, that uh, many other mathematical subjects are useful for the environment, and uh, many initiatives are taken. But uh, I look at the figures given by economists, and uh, so for instance, the International Energy Agency said that the global uh, public spending for peak RD and D, research, development, and demonstration for clean energy, including nuclear energy, is only of the order of 1.5% of uh, military expenditures. It's a bit crazy, uh, given the situation. And um, so this, uh, well, it's good to say it because usually people don't know that the level is uh, the research for clean, clean energy and the environment is uh, so underscaled. And uh, in fact, it's uh, much there is much less research than in other sectors like uh, computer science or pharmaceutics. And, and uh, this means also for us that. Uh, Doing that more pure and applied research to uh, for things uh, useful for the environment may have a big impact because there is uh, really a lack of such uh, research. That's, uh, anyway, that's my impression. Okay. Thank you. So thank you for this uh, very impressive talk. Are there any questions or remarks? No questions? Well, I have one. So uh, how much can be computed in this, uh, in this setting? I mean, this is completely explicit. The construction is com completely explicit. So, so excursion operators? Yes. Now it is difficult to compute because they are monodromies, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so is it possible to, to do some computations in? Uh, there are some people are uh, working on uh, computing Eladic cohomology. Uh, I don't know, uh, Mador or Gogozo. Or... Dixoven, Couvegne have a book, but it's uh, 
very compli complicated. Yeah. But it, it's computable uh, theoretically? Uh, there, is, there is an article of Madoro Gokuzo that it's computable, but it's, uh, you have to uh, DVC in, in curves. That's, uh, I don't know how to say in English. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's horrible. Mm. Okay. It's really horrible. You have this uh, beautiful stack of two cars, and then you have to write it as a vibration of curves over curves over curves in a completely arbitrary way. So it's certainly something horrible. Okay, thank you. More questions? Less naive questions? If not, let us thank the speaker again. Thank you.